Greetings everybody, it's Rob, and I'm back. And I know you guys have not seen many Marvel Champions videos from me. There's been a few kind of solo Champion League videos here and there, but there hasn't been much other than that. And I feel like there was a bit of a little content drought in terms of new stuff coming out. But Sinister Motives has been at least coming out soon. And with it, we've already started to see the spoilers, kind of see the full card list of all the different cards in there. The last villain has kind of been revealed as what it really is, but that's for another video. This video, we're going to be discussing the first villain in the campaign, Sandman himself. So let's take a look at Sandman's cards, see what he's all about, and kind of take a deeper dive into his card set. So with that, we will begin with Sandman Stage 1. One scheme, two attack. When he attacks... He deals indirect damage on every attack. So that means he can spread his damage out. You can spread his damage out. If your identity takes any amount of damage from this attack, resolve the surging sand ability on city streets. All right. And he's got 16 health. Not bad. That's a respectable amount. Stage 2. 3 attack. 18 hit points. When he's revealed the surging sand ability on city streets, automatically gets resolved one so if you're an expert it happens at the start of the game and this ability is the same let's make sure it's the same sample as sample as yep stage three same stats one three when revealed you place a sand counter on city streak and you also resolve it sourcing sand's ability so again expert means you'll be resolving it at least twice throughout the the whole game, at least because of stage two and stage three. And then his interrupt changes to Sand Wave. When Sandman attacks you, that attack gains overkill. No longer indirect, it's now an overkill attack. And if your identity takes any amount of damage from that attack, resolve the Surging Sand's ability. So now, instead of being indirect on stage three, he focuses the damage and overkill the targets. So that's going to be a bit trickier. Hapless Pedestrians, this is the 1A main scheme. Search the encounter deck for the city streets environment and put it into play. Place four sand counters on it. And then force response. After an acceleration token is placed on this scheme, deal three indirect damage to the first player. That makes me think that, especially with only being one scheme and... It's starting with two per player, one per that. It's probably the deck's going to cycle through pretty quickly. And as a result, the acceleration tokens will be added on a lot more frequently and more damage will occur from it. City Streets, here we go. Surging Sands, special. Place one sand counter here. Discard cards from the top of the encounter deck equal to the number of sand counters here. There we go. So City Streets is basically blowing through the encounter deck Forcing the acceleration tokens onto the main scheme, which will then do indirect damage as it do to each player, to the first player, as well as, of course, adding acceleration token, making it harder for you to, you know, maintain threat if it's getting so much threat. Hero action, exhaust the character you control, remove sand counters from here equal to that character's attack. So it can be any character, it doesn't have to be your main hero an ally can do it as well so if you have an ally like like a blade or someone that you, you don't want to maybe you, you don't want them to take consequential damage maybe they have a tough on them you can exhaust and they can up keep the sand tokens under control and if you remember it starts the game with four and then stage two resolves so that means at the beginning of the game four encounter cards get shut off in expert right off the bat and then stage three places one on guaranteeing that at least one card will fall off the ability oh no, sorry two actually so that means two and then on an expert five cards will go off the top four from the main scheme one from city streets so right away you're already five six cards down the deck when you begin the game on expert so it's definitely going to be a race against the clock when you're fighting Sandman. Sandform. Attached to Sandman. 
when you would deal any amount of damage to Sandman, discard Sand form instead, reveal the certain Sand's ability. So, this one is very interesting in that it's kind of we've seen these shield cards before. A lot, a lot of you know, Kang has it, Ultron has it. These kind of cards that block and absorb damage and either put threat on or do or deal damage back. This one's gonna force you to blow through the encounter deck even quicker, and you're gonna be taking more cards off the deck. And when it comes up as a boost card, it still gets added onto him. And there's two copies of that. Sand Clown. One scheme, X attack, three health. X is equal to the number of sand counters on city streets. So again, this is interesting as well. Because if you let the sand counters get out of hand, these guys become a bit intense. Especially if you think about the fact that the game starts with four counters. If you don't deal with that, they have four attack if they if they get flipped up like the first turn. And then when they're defeated, you resolve the Southern Sand ability. So again, every card that you seem to get rid of just triggers more sand to appear on, on the street. More stuff keeps happening. And we have three of those. Four of those, sorry. Four sand clones. So there's a lot. There's a bit of a minion heavy deck there. Dirt Trap. Now this is a nasty looking card, both in terms of the artwork and in terms of what the card does. When defeated, resolve the Southern Sands ability on city streets. Resolve it again. So it pretty much means add a counter, burn encounter cards. Add another counter, burn even more encounter cards. And what's clever about this is it's only one threat. Got a crisis icon, but you have to deal with it to get the main threat. It takes barely any effort, but you get hit so bad with the penalty for it that it's gonna hurt. And that's nasty. That's a nasty side scheme. I have to say. And there's two of them. Good God. Title Sands. When revealed, place X additional threat here, where X is equal to the number of sand counters on city streets. Two plus, and then there's a, a boost icon for extra cards. All right. So again, this one is one of those where if you control the city streets, it's not as bad. If the city streets are getting out of hand, then this scheme is going to be a bit over the top. Thankfully, there's no when defeated effect to this one. Sand slide. When revealed, place two sound counters on city streets. Then resolve its certain sands ability. Okay. So that means at least three cards will be flipped off the top of the deck. Two from this card, one from the from the city streets itself, plus any other any other counters that may already be there. If at least one Sandman card was discarded this way, you are stunned. So the more cards, the more chance that you'll get stunned from this card. And when it flips over as a boost, it triggers just as just 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 as well. Sandstorm. When revealed, deal X indirect damage among players, where X is equal to the number of sand counters on city streets. If there are no sand counters, place three counters on it and shuffle this card into the encounter deck. Now, this is a clever card. Because up until this point, we haven't seen any way for Sandman to load the, the card back up. He's got ways to add two, ways to add one at a time quickly. But there has been a way for him to really, like, if you keep it under control fully at zero, where he can't wait to get him back up to where it's a threat. This card adds three, shuffles it back into the deck if you have it fully under control. Otherwise, he just sprays damage everywhere. Sand Smash. Alter Ego. It he resolved the Surging Sand's ability and gained Surge. So another card flips out. So the way this would work, I believe, is you would resolve the ability first and then the surge triggers. And then when revealed as a hero, attacks with a plus one attack. That's probably the most basic card here. And we got two of those. So what do we think about Sandman? Sandman is, it's very interesting, I have to say, for what he does. He has that 
high tempo game to or you are race against the counters. To me, this almost feels like a better Absorbing Man. People who have played the Rise of the Red Skull, you know, you know, Absorbing Man was kind of the second encounter in there. And he has the delay counter where basically the story the story works for that one is that he's he's trying to stop you from chasing after the uh, I think it's the reality stone in that one. Forget which stone. It's a it's a power stone. Um some sort of some sort of gem. Some sort of uh infinity gem. But it never really felt like you had much I don't know, it never really felt that it had that much oomph to it. It just kind of felt like it was more of a drag. This one feels like the pressure is a lot more on you. There's a lot more like you almost feel like the sand really is building up because every turn you never know how many cards might flip out of the off of the deck. And before you know it, you know, two, three it's always tokens are on the main scheme. Now suddenly the main scheme is getting four or five threat a turn. And that's gonna be tricky to to keep up. You have to keep the threat up while taking care of Sandman and maintaining the sand counters. Now, thankfully, Sandman's deck itself doesn't have too much. Deck. There's only, only on that one card that causes stun. So other than that, there's no other cards like that. There's only two sand smashes that do a damage. It does have four minions, so you gotta be careful about that. Plus the three side schemes. So there's definitely stuff in there. I definitely think Target Acquired might be a good card to have it in the deck against Sandman. A lot of the cards that have boost icons automatically basically say, reveal this card. So you probably want to get rid of those so you don't have to deal with those specific cards, plus whatever other encounter sets may be in there as well. So I think that would definitely help. I would probably be careful or wary about playing this against like Star Lord, Scarlet Witch, those kind of heroes that burn the encounter deck themselves with their abilities. That may, that may only make the counter go even faster but if you do enough damage you can burst them down it should be possible but i'm this is actually a really cool really nice way to start it off i know we had ebony Moore in the last box and he was pretty interesting with how he kind of did his spells and stuff but it was pretty straightforward in terms of like you know he did spells damage side scheme this one is more main scheme environment. Environment's kind of ticking up, cards flying off the table. Next thing you know, you know, there's two acceleration tokens on the on the main scheme already, and you have to deal with threat while trying to stop Sandman and his army of sand clones. So that's like a lot of fun. And I'm really excited to play this campaign once I get it either in person or once it's loaded up into the tabletop simulator for you guys, I think it would be a lot of fun. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this little review of Sandman. Be sure to stay tuned for my other videos discussing the other campaign villains and encounters in the Sinister Motives campaign expansion. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are interested in checking out those videos, as they will be coming out sometime after this one. So thank you guys for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it.